Guys, today we're going to be watching this video from Grenader Jake. You probably have all heard of him. He plays a ton of trials. And he has a video here, The Truth About Desi 2 and Bungie, which is a very intriguing title. So let's watch this. Gentlemen, I would like to just take some time today to maybe bring the community a little bit more together. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of opinions right now about Destiny, about Bungie, and I feel like this is maybe the least united I've ever felt the Destiny community be. I've been a part of the Destiny community since day one of Destiny launch, September 9th, 2014. I've been through every single phase of the game, all the goods, all the bads, and I'm not sure I've been this disconnected with the entire community. So let's talk for a bit about a whole lot of different things and just maybe at the end of this all we'll feel a little bit more united and maybe I'm crazy. Let's see. So the first thing I want to say, which is going to turn a lot of heads and probably people are going to think I'm crazy for even suggesting this, but maybe you'll understand by the end of the little rant. The first thing I want to say is that Destiny is still and actually is even more so a great game it's even better than it used to be what and that's what's going to turn heads people are going to be like are you kidding me but let's talk about like what is destiny for a second it is a looter shooter pve pvp combination where you can play different activities take the armor or the weapons that you earn from different activities bring them into other activities and even more so than that you can use fragments through different subclasses on different characters combined with different armor perks combined with different weapon perks combined with different artifact perks to have quite literally an endless combination of possibilities and that's not even the best part about okay first up he's not sponsored all right i need i need to make something clear about the whole sponsorship thing because i get comments all the time like my hell divers review across how much they pay you are you sponsored first up you we, we actually have to put on there that it's sponsored we have to we have to say that this is sponsored and on youtube there will be a little thing that pops up that says this video was sponsored but third that just seems sponsored for what? What would he be sponsored for saying that Destiny is a good game? You know, I think from a technical aspect, or at least from the changes that have happened, you know, in terms of loadouts, in-game LFG, and all that stuff, I can agree with that. But uh, no, I don't. He's not sponsored, guys. I just, I just wanted. I know we just kind of derailed everything right now, but Jake is not being sponsored to say these things. Destiny. The best part about Destiny is the gunplay. I mean, go play other shooters out there. For whatever reason, Destiny has absolutely killed it. And Bungie's always killed it with how gunplay feels in their games. And people have the false narrative of saying that Destiny is a terrible game. It's not. It's fantastic. But for a second, let's talk about maybe why it feels terrible to so many people. And I'm not going to lie to you. It feels a little bad to me too, but that's not on Bungie. We're going to get to Bungie in a bit and all the things that I think they're kind of doing incorrectly. But for now, we're going to focus on something different. For now, let's focus on us, the community. Bungie isn't doing anything wrong here. It's our expectations that are currently incorrect. Imagine you have a favorite food a favorite restaurant even and you go to that restaurant and order the same thing every single meal not even every day just every meal you love it at the beginning you like it by week two you're okay with it by week three by week four you probably can't stand this anymore now you wouldn't go to the manager and get mad at them that that meal you've ordered 30 times 90 times whatever by now isn't appealing the way it used to be. It's the same kind of system here with Bungie. I genuinely believe that nine and a half years after the launch of Destiny 1, the majority of the frustration related to Destiny 2 just comes from overplaying it. So many people in my Twitch chat will come in after a year or two of taking a break and we'll talk about how much they miss the game and how much they love it now that they're back. I've even taken a big break from Destiny and come back to it multiple times throughout my career. And when I come back to it, it feels fresh and it feels incredible. This is gonna hurt my viewership on YouTube. It's gonna hurt my viewership. What are y'all's you, thoughts about that? I, I, I kind of understand his analogy, but in my opinion, as the game developers, as the game maker, you're supposed to mix the menu up. So I get where the analogy is coming from about like, if you eat the same thing every damn day of every damn week, it's gonna get stale. But to be a developer of a live service game, you gotta shake the menu up and shake it up big, especially if you plan on that game going for as many years as this game is gone. And look, you know, we, we could look at other MRPGs to draw these conclusions that do change that menu up for better or for worse. We're, we're going to continue. I just, I'm just curious what you guys have to say. I, I, I also agree with them too, that there is, there are 
you know, there are people that overplay, like over, like play literally this game all the time, every day, at every moment, and and they just get burnt out. But I'm I'm gonna say from my perspective, at least for the past year, my perspective is I have played other games just as much as I have played Destiny 2, and I still come back and I still find flaws and I still find frustrations with the game and I still question some of the decisions that Bungie makes, even when taking those breaks, and that's happening happening to me more frequently. Again, this is just on a personal take here just my my situation ship on twitch i don't care if you feel this way about destiny you feel tired of it bored of it frustrated by it stop playing until final shape go play a different game take a break from gaming do something else this game that you once loved probably still feels just as good to you if you just took a break from it and took a step away from it you come back to it a few months later i bet you that same spark is reignited because this game the gunplay the abilities the en endless possibilities the ridiculous number of activities to do it's still phenomenal we're just a little bored of it and really let me just say this he is right if you are burnt out on the game go play something else until final shape at the same time as a developer of a live service game if you're a developer of a live service game or if you're bungie the last thing you want people to do is take a break because what happens in those breaks suddenly we get an idea let's 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 go play power world oh i can i can just play power world all the fucking time oh my god my base i can build these base i can capture all these pals suddenly i play power world every day of my life now it's four or five years later that's what i would say i'm just saying it again if i was you know not a developer but if i was to develop something i would want to make something so addicting because you don't want the players to ever leave ever you want to keep them on the hamster it going all day long year round 365 baby and you know there was a time that i took a break and i know you're probably gonna be like cross are you about to mention runescape yes i took a break from runescape because they had a shit update that being evolution of, of of combat and what happened i left and suddenly i found other things to do in life look i bring up runescape a bunch but i think runescape is like the blueprint for how a developer can shoot both feet at the same damn time of which they did you know runescape had me by the balls i was gonna play it for the rest of my life i remember there was one point in my life where i was playing runescape and i remember I, you know i was just i just sat down i just finished work i sat down in the day it was like you know six o'clock in the evening and i was like i sat down i was like oh man this is the life it's like i got runescape i, I got no plans for the evening i can do this forever if i was to die it's probably the only time in my life I was like, if I would die right now, I would feel good. I will feel like I have lived a fulfilling life. And then about three months later, they had evolution, evolution of combat and then everything went to shit. The point is, a developer really needs to keep you on that hamster wheel. Realistically, it's more than just being bored of it. It's also very directly related to the community. And what I mean by that is the community not only drives PvP, but also if we have a bunch of friends who are playing Destiny, it's going to be more enjoyable to be playing Destiny. When you've got a big group of people texting each other, Discord pinging Dude, each other the about best. the raid, about weekly resets, that's about doing best. nightfalls, it's going to get you more excited too. This isn't even a Bungie fault. We're going to get to Bungie stuff soon. But again, this is just a natural nine and a half years after Destiny comes out, six and a half years after Destiny 2 comes out, people are going to leave the game. People are going to lose excitement for the game. And in doing so, your friend group that plays, they're probably going to not play as much. And also the PvP community, what once was a pretty populated player base allowing for quick matchmaking, little lag, way less sweaty matches that probably bother you. There's going to be way more lag, way longer matchmaking, way more sweaty matches. So that's going to make the game feel worse too. So it's a combination of boredom, but also just the community slowly but surely sort of bleeding away, leaving it less... I don't know, there's just less of a strong community. And this is natural, but it's still a pain point and a point that frustrates people. And I think that they unfairly talk about how horrible Destiny is just because of the very natural pain point that is the decreasing player population and the, de the decreasing community as a result. Now okay. let's talk about Bungie real quick and a couple of ways that I think that they are sort of fueling all this and making things worse than they need to be. One of those ways is that they sort of prey on the nostalgia that we have for Destiny and the emotion that we have from all these, whether you've been playing for three years, six years, nine years, whatever, our emotions from playing for so long and being a part of a community for so long. I don't know how many different times in trailers, in interviews or whatnot, you have people on the mic telling us who we are so excited and so thirsty for new content 
telling us that the better days are ahead. The best destiny is still to come. This feels a little bit predatory to me, and it also leads to some false hope that, oh my goodness, destiny is about to be so good, and therefore when it doesn't match our elevated expectations, we turn towards them in anger and frustration. Bungie doesn't maybe recognize this, but chat, YouTube, friends, destiny's never gonna be as fun for you as it used to be. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Maybe one out of a hundred of you are gonna actually have the- No! I can't accept that. I can't accept that. It can't be true, man. It can't be true. I buy into it every year. Every year I buy into it. Say it ain't true. Dude, this is starting to get into like game psychology. You know what I mean? At what point does the game peak for you? You know, F me. This is not the therapy session I wanted to have today. Let's just continue. This not be the case and somehow, some way, Final Shape's gonna be more fun than you've ever had in Destiny. But the best Destiny days are behind us. Not gameplay wise necessarily. I believe that they continue to make little quality of life updates here and there. And the game actually, probably gameplay wise, is improving as we go. But something that's un- <laughs> Mac makes a great point. Is he right? Probably. Will I believe it? Absolutely not. All the way to the end. Stoppable that Bungie can't do anything about is the newness factor and the nostalgia factor. We look back to nine years ago or whenever it was you started playing and they feel like the good old days. All your friends were playing, your community was playing, the game was fresh. You'd never tried a shooter like this where you could get stuff from PvE or PvP and apply them to different builds and use them in different places and grind for specific roles and specific weapons you haven't gotten or perfect armor builds or whatever. It was exciting to you and that excitement was part of what made destiny so good it's never going to feel that good again you're never going to be able to recapture that excitement again and i don't want to sound like a negative person i'm just trying to be realistic bungie preys on that a little bit by well i will say this although I, I i do agree with jake i am a romantic though and i will you know continue getting my heart broken year after year at the same time that's why i think sequels are important that's why i do think a destiny 3 would be important because again, it's like it's Bungie's responsibility to come out here if they want to continue to keep us within this franchise to, to mix that menu up, to change things up. And if you brought in a D3 with, you know, destructible environments. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is because Hell Divers has really changed my perspective on live service games. That experience over the past week has been incredible. And seeing like how how them as the game masters can change things on the fly. We're literally playing Hell Divers right now. And last night or sometime yesterday, an invasion takes place. Like literally we unlocked it in the game and the game masters within them, which is just the game developers, initiated an invasion from the robots. And now we're having to fight off this invasion, which is incredibly hard. Now, if we somehow magically fight off this invasion and keep those three planets secured, then great. They go back, they we, we regain and keep those sectors. But if they end up overtaking those planets, they get closer and closer to Earth. And so you, you feel like you're in a live game. And my issue with Destiny for years is everything has been on these rails. It's this on the rails storytelling, yet they sit behind, you know, the the on the wall here and say it's a live service game. I don't I don't feel that it's a live game. I feel like everything is just scripted and projected. And we all just show up for our week to week chapter of information and content and story. It's a legit solo game. Can I can I read something for you guys? I, I just wanna I just wanna stop just real quick and just read this. This is on Arrowhead's website. This is the developers for Hell Divers. You mentioned that Destiny is a solo game. Although there are many aspects of the game you cannot experience as a solo player. But this is one of the best comments I've I've ever read. A game for everyone is a game for no one. Somewhere along the way, I feel like Bungie kept trying to make the game for everyone. So I think that's a great philosophy to have. Look, sometimes when you make a game and it's bold, it's not going to be for everyone. That's okay. I, because, you know, with it, then you could still carve out a very sizable community that loves and adores your game. It's all right. But back to this. By telling you that the best days are yet to come. And then we, the community, often listen to that, assume that they're telling us the truth, and get really upset when we play that new DLC, and it doesn't feel as good as it used to. So I'm going to get to the next big thing that I believe Bungie is sort of doing incorrectly here in a moment. But first, I want to take a quick pit stop and sort of talk about the trajectory of Destiny and what I believe Destiny will look like for the next few years. This problem that we sort of feel at the moment as a community of either being frustrated with the game or there's a lack of a player base or what it, whatever it might be leading up to Final Shape, it's only gonna be worse in a year. What I'm about to talk about is not 
factually sound, but as somebody whose career is very much based around destiny and as somebody who hopefully has demonstrated the ability to be very logical and reasonable about things, hopefully you can trust that I have put a lot of thought into this a lot of analysis into this and have really looked deep into everything that Bungie's given us so hopefully this opinion comes with a little bit more weight than maybe somebody else but if not that's okay disregard I'm almost sure that we are about to get our last ever big DLC our last ever big raid and although they are kind of teasing about this idea of episodes kind of continuing forever and people just coming back every four months to check out the new stuff in destiny this feeling that we have leading up to the final shape of oh my goodness we need this so desperately as a community i think this is the last time we ever get it 2024 which does mark 10 years that destiny's been out and they did promise us 10 years originally i believe this is the last year that we will ever really have destiny as we know it and bungie's not really being honest about that they sort of dance around the idea and they make it sound like destiny is going to go forever or not forever necessarily but that they're continuing year after year after year after 2024 to build on destiny and while they may be planning to do that it's not going to be the same destiny that we have known and expected for the last 10 years that big annual dlc is necessary for how many of us play and envision Destiny. Without subclasses coming out, without big new raids, without all this excitement, there's not gonna be many people returning for these episodes. Maybe episode one, maybe episode two, but realistically, by mid-2025, I can almost guarantee you that the Destiny player base is going to be a minuscule percentage compared to what it is now. And again, this is not me trying to be negative. It's just me trying to read through the lines of everything they've given us and everything they told us and Marathon coming out and all that. That's the big thing there. You got Marathon next year. I think 2025 is going to be, everything is going to be to, to get Marathon out the door. And I, I, I do agree with Jake on this. I think that this year, I think Final Shape is probably going to be the last annual expansion that we have for a while. They may try to throw some annual expansion after that, but I think it's going to happen after Marathon is out. Marathon is a joke. Look, man, I got different information. I got information that Marathon wasn't received that well, but I haven't personally played Marathon. You know, I heard there was Tarkov streamers that got to play it. Who knows what the sentiment was there? Am I going to give Marathon a fair shake? Sure. I'm going to try it out. We're going to see how it plays out next year. You know, I hate to see Destiny suffer for that, but maybe Marathon is going to be the greatest game Bungie's ever made. It might. It might. I don't know. It might. It might be the greatest game ever made. I don't. I like. I have to believe something, guys. I have to believe something. At the end of the day, you got your your some of your best creative leads working on Marathon. Surely not. It cannot be shot. It cannot be. But again, we won't know until next year other stuff going on at Bungie that we've heard with layoffs and budget cuts and all this stuff reading between the lines of all of it this is the last big DLC this is the last raid I really wish that they would be honest with us about that and set our expectations correctly otherwise a year from now in early 2025 the anger and frustration from the destiny community is going to be 10 times worse than it is right now I would love to have the final shape be this wonderful conclusion so I get where Jake's coming from would it be better if Bungie came out and said, this is it, this is the last annual expansion, or Final Shape launches six months go by, we're waiting for the next annual expansion to be talked about, and then it just doesn't happen. Dude, that would be terrible. Everybody'd be like, what the hell is going on over there? It might get people to buy it and finish the saga. I don't know, man. It's so weird, dude. Did you buy Halo 3 because you knew it was going to be the last? No, you bought Halo 3 because Halo 2 was dope. And you were like, I need to know more. Best way to get people to buy shit. Make the previous shit be good. And then we had Reach, which was fantastic as well. well Lightfall was crap. All right, within well, that case, you might as well just go ahead and say this is the last one, you know, and see if people buy it. I want to see Kate again. It's funny that you mentioned that because Jake just said that Bungie preys on nostalgia. And funny enough, we're getting Kate again. You know what I mean? He's kind of got a point, right? Inclusion for what has been a 10-year incredible journey in Destiny. I would love for all the OGs and all the people along the way who joined to come together one final time and celebrate the end of an incredible 10-year journey. But I'm fearful that's not what's going to happen because they're sort of playing on our emotions by selling this idea that episodes will continue the Destiny experience for years to come again it's not factual but i can pretty much guarantee this is it friends as far as we have known destiny this is the last year it's going to be the way that we love it to be and honestly i i, I want to be wrong i want to be wrong 
I'm almost sure I'm not. Maybe one day in the future, Bungie will make a Destiny 3 or sell the rights to it for another company to make. They did something similar with Halo because this is a definite wonderful community of people that at this point may be fragmented in all in all kinds of different places, but they have an opportunity to create a game years down the road that all of us will come back to. One day they probably will make a Destiny 3, but I don't see that day coming for a long time. So to end this rant, that I've been recording for four and a half minutes before I get on to the biggest problem I have with Bungie. Man, I'm doing this all with no script, by the way. No preparation. Well I done, just took man. a shower well and was thinking about it. I should record a video talking about this stuff. This is all pretty Dude, much the shower. Take. Anyway, the shower brings it, it out. I think I've said everything I need to say. We'll move to the next segment about uh, some issues I got with Bungie. All right, well, here's where things get a little personal and the whole story related to Bungie. My biggest personal issue with Bungie and where we are currently as a fragmented community is their inability to tackle the cheater and harassment problem in destiny and you might be thinking oh my god here he goes again or like they have an anti-cheat what's wrong with it but here's it the problem the anti-cheat may catch a few things a few people here and there but so many people cheating, whether that's hardcore aim hacking, wall hacking, whether that's Cronus's or Zim's giving bonus aim assists and all kinds of crazy stuff they do that I don't even fully understand. People are getting through and a lot of people are getting through. And while maybe you don't experience it to the level I do as someone who plays 3v3, streams it and gets harassed by these people, specifically sniping me, targeting me, watching my stream to match against me and cheat against me and ruin my carry. While you may not experience it as badly as I do, Anybody who's playing PvP, even on console where Zims and Cronuses exist, they're dealing with cheaters on a much more frequent base than they should have to. And the reason I'm so frustrated with Bungie here, I understand that many video games are dealing with cheaters and that it's not necessarily a Bungie problem. They have a lot of creators, I'm going to raise my hand and say I'm one of them, who does everything they can to take down the names of people who are cheating, of people who are harassing, and provide as much evidence as possible as to all of the terms of service that they are breaking and then hand deliver them to people who specifically work at Bungie for these things. Yet, month after month after month, these same people who've been either terrorizing me or terrorizing the playlist or whatever, they're still playing. People from Bungie aren't actually taking action on things that should be extremely easy to take action on. And that is what is so frustrating because as a PVP streamer, I'm constantly seeing my Twitch chat which is full of people who play or used to play PvP, I'm seeing that frustration. Minute after minute, someone's complaining about losing their flawless card because of a cheater. I mean, to say this, I played Rumble last night, and yeah, every lobby had a cheater. It's gotten really bad, guys. You know, I don't know what the ratio was before, but I'm serious, like every Rumble game had a cheater. And uh, I could speculate all day long on why the cheaters haven't been dealt with. At the end of the day, they are still a number. Probably people that do buy the expansions, uh, you know, do play and, and pay for things in the game. Maybe Bungie's looking to capitalize on that, which is a terrible thing. It almost reminds me, and again, I'm going to mention RuneScape here as well. But JGX had to make a decision a long time ago. Do we continue taking all this money from these bots? And there were just thousands of bots. I remember there would be so many bots and bots being someone that you would literally like, you would download a bot client and it would sit there and have your character mine gold all day long. Just sit there mine gold all day long. There would be so many bots in the uh, in the Rockfish Caverns that whenever, and they all went this, they all were using the same script that whenever they would move, your PC would freeze. Like everything would freeze. That's how many bots there were moving in unison. And as soon as the gold ran out, they would all move to the next one. And so at some point, a developer has to make a decision in order to save the organic player base they have, they got to deal with the cheaters, the botters and everything else. And they ended up finally making that decision. Bungie's going to have to make that decision too. Now, granted, I know a lot of people are saying, well, they're incapable because maybe the anti-cheat is not catching that. There are ways to work around this. You know, I personally think what they should do is they should go in there and they should give a select few player mod rights. Essentially, you make me a player mod. And that way, when that guy across from me dicks on me, I can just ban him. That would mitigate most cheaters. Now, will I hit some innocence in that? Probably, right? Occasionally, maybe one to two, maybe three. I may ban someone who is a legitimate good player. But think about all the cheaters I would get in the process. I mean, when you think about it, right? Like, I'm, come on. It's a sacrifice that's worthy. I would think that the people that were legitimately getting banned, they would understand. They would probably walk away from it going, you know what? The f ban me, but 
Look how many cheaters this guy. You know, he's got like a 96, 95% success rate. That's great. And I think they would be okay with it, right? All right, but let, let's continue on this. Maybe they quit Destiny entirely because they just can't handle getting the three or four wins just to match a cheater and lose all that progress they've had. People are fed up. They're tired. And one of the biggest reasons that the Destiny community is as depleted as it is, especially in the PvP world, is because of Bungie's lack of ability to actually take action on these people that are so easy to discover. Not only are streamers hand feeding them to the people at Bungie who have requested them, but anybody with even just a little bit of an idea could use websites, could use, I mean, I would think they're- Didn't the security team get laid off though? Didn't, didn't like a number of the, it was like 50% of the security team got laid off? Most of the security team got fired. Dude, Bungie just went in there like when they were laying off, they were just like, dude, we gotta save money, slash everything. Maybe they should hire someone. <laughs> there would be algorithms or AI for this, but you could look up stats and quite easily pinpoint people who are not legitimate. Maybe somebody at Bungie could work on this and actually help their community. Imagine just looking every week at the top weekly KDs in Trials of Osiris. Oh, the top guy's got a 30.0. Let's look at him. Oh, he's only played two matches and he went 15-0 both times. And okay, it's actually fine. Next guy's 29.8. Oh, he's played 100 matches and his most killed with weapon is a heavy weapon. Okay, so he's got infinite heavy. Oh, goodness. Let's deal with that. Next guy's a 19 KD. Whoa, dude. He's got 600 so kills obvious, with Cloud Strike it's and literally a that easy. headshot ratio. And he made his account yesterday. That's kind of a problem. Things like that wouldn't be hard to do, but no one's doing it. Bungie, I'm going to say this directly to anybody who's listening. I will pay for the salary of somebody to do the job I am describing right now. If you have no money, because that's been a thing we've heard from Bungie is that they've got budget issues and they can't afford things. I will finance this. If you want to hire somebody to manually review Trials of Osiris and any PVP accounts that are flagged by a lot of people or who statistically are just wildly improved compared to anybody else. If you want to manually review that and hire someone to do it, I will pay for it. That's how serious I am about how easy this would be and how much it would help the deck. What a terrible look though for a developer. Like I am completely behind Jake on this. I would love it if they would take this deal. What a terrible look for a developer. Can you imagine the headlines? Streamer, pay salary for person to actually implement anti-cheat or for developer to actually implement anti-cheat. Yeah, I think everybody would run with that. Shit. Sony be picking up the phone call and Bungie being like, what the f is going on over there? No one should have to do that, right? Obviously. But yeah, I would love it because even that would be better than what we're currently getting now. Destiny community. There's a lot of false narrative out there about me thinking everyone's a cheater. For anybody who's actually watched my Twitch for more than one or two matches, you probably know that that's not true. But for all the people on Twitter who love to just believe the pitchfork garbage, most likely for every 95 to 96 people that I am sure is cheating and say is cheating and is indeed cheating, there's maybe three or four who I get incorrect. And I will admit that's not good. I should probably not call people cheaters if unless I'm 100% sure that they are. But there are always clips of the one time I got wrong that blow up versus the 99 I get right that don't. The point Let me just say this. If you beat me in a 1v1, you are a 1000% cheating because there's no other way. No feasible possible way. And I will report you. And I do this in Rumble games. I do this in Trials games and comp games all of them. and if you feel that i have falsely called you out and if you even show definitive proof good shit. did ai produce that shit for you that's really nice huh how'd you shoot that footage i don't believe you for a f***ing second point i want to make here is it's i'm not the one who i don't want to take responsibility for banning the cheaters i don't want that job but having some unbiased person review people who are being flagged by many people whose stats way outmatch anybody else's, whose accounts are brand new, who maybe used to be a 0.4 last season and now are a 4.8. Things that just don't make sense. How is nobody at Bungie doing anything about it? It actually in- I would say that is the most obvious. When someone is able to elevate their KDs from season over season, stats substantially, there should be like alarm bells at Bungie that goes off. I mean, if you suddenly go from a 0.5 to a 3 or 4.0 KD, e even if you went from a 0.5 to like a 2.0, you go from a 0.5 to a 2.0, I'm questioning things. But if you go beyond that point, dude, 
alarm bells should be going off. That should be like the most obvious statistic right there to just ping up. There should be just like a group of names that as soon as it, it escalates over that point from season over season, then there should be just an easy list for Bungie to go through and ban. So it so infuriates me that a loyal community of people who have been playing their game for nine plus years, spending money on their studio year after year, showing un dying loyalty to their game i went from a 0.6 to a 1.8 on xbox what's your destiny name what's your what's your bungee id i'm just curious i just want to look it up myself drop your name the four digits behind your name i'm gonna put this to the test real quick oh zimbot 6969 oh yeah that sounds legit it drives me crazy that Bungie wouldn't just do us the tiny bit of service of having one person manually going through and therefore probably cleansing 80 percent of the freaking cheater problem Actually, that would, in I Destiny. Mean, that would be, and sure, yeah. these cheaters or just, just watch make new accounts. You know, just to watch pay for Lightfall or whatever the newest DLC is to play Trials. These cheaters will just do more account recoveries. Sure, there are some very not intelligent people who give their accounts to cheaters who are saying, the cheaters are saying, hey, we'll get your account flawless. Just give us 30 bucks. We'll log in. We'll go flawless for you. We'll give you back your information. Well, they change their password. They go flawless while cheating. That's now their account. That's going to dry up if they keep banning everyone doing this the pool of accounts these people can create and get That's are gonna true, dry up so that look dude i mean you just got to be hardcore like that i picked up old school runescape a few years ago i was like dude i don't want to train agility i set up a macro overnight thinking i was sly came back the next day already banned not even 24 hours like literally go to sleep wake up my account already banned and that's just how hardcore jagex is now i don't know i don't know if they're still that way maybe they are but i'm saying they they immediately hit my shit for just a simple macro dude and that right there set the tone i was like oh damn we've got a different jagex now they really don't f around i must not cheat excuse by the way macro and is really not that cheating i mean come on who wants to sit there and high out for for, for 200 hours straight nobody but Obviously, that's the way JX wants things to be done. On the other side of things, you do have games like Final Fantasy 14, who has a macro system built in, which is amazing. It's like they'll just get a new account doesn't make sense. Bungie needs to take action on these people. There is extremely clear and easy ways for them to do it, yet they refuse to do it. It's killing their PvP community. It's just absolutely infuriatingly in the face of all of us who've supported their game for so long. And it's the biggest problem I have with them. I want to make this clear too. Bungie's a giant company. I don't know if it's a thousand people, 1400 people. I'm not sure, but it's a big, big company. I don't have issues with everyone at Bungie and I probably get misquoted and misinterpreted too often by just using the term Bungie too freely. I'm probably talking about 1% of the people at Bungie when I say things like this. All of the devs who worked their ass off DLC after DLC, update after update, I respect them so freaking much. Those devs work hard and they create an incredible game. I am a huge fan of the vast majority of Bungie. But whoever's in charge of security, I don't know who's in charge of it, but whoever is, I've got a problem with you. Whoever still works in the security team, I've got a problem with you. And realistically, whoever is at the top of Bungie managing all this, I have a problem with you. That's where my problem is. I can't believe nothing's being done, but tip of the cap to all the devs who worked their ass off. I don't want any disrespect towards you from me or any of my viewers. And honestly, that, that's it. Unscripted, ranting, I hope it made sense and was good to sort of take it all and bundle it real quick. Destiny is still an incredible game. We just might be a little bored of it. Take a break if you feel that way. Come back to it. You might be surprised by how good it is. Whether you love Destiny still or not, come back for Final Shape. Although Bungie's not making it very clear, it's pretty obvious to me that this is their last big bang for Destiny. If you've ever been a big fan of, it, of Destiny in the past, do not miss Final Shape. It's coming out June 4th. Here I am basically advertising for Destiny, but as a huge fan and player of the game, I want to see the community come together for the Final Shape and enjoy it as what it should be, a wonderful send-off before Destiny changes forever as we know it. Thank you for watching, everybody. Great video, I appreciate Jake. you making it all the way Great through video. the video. If you made it all the way through, not only thank you, but second of all, leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about destiny how you feel about bungie which points i made that maybe resonate really well with you which i need to like this video and i need to leave a comment cheaters suck ass it's not a constructive comment but i i just think we, we should put that in there there's a lot of great points in this video though truly and you know i want to kind of circle back to that last point though on this being the you know the last the last hoorah if you will right <sighs> 
it's very likely that's going to be the case. That this is going to be it for Destiny. We're either going to come out of this praising Bungie and appreciating the last 10 years of our Destiny experience, or we're going to come out of it super pissed off. There really is no in between on this. Jake, much love to you. Chat, please go follow Jake on Twitch, on YouTube. Incredible content. Jake, I don't know how you stream trials, man. I do it for a day and I question life for the rest of the weekend. I, I just, I can't take it. The patience of a saint, man. Come on, guys, stop doing it to yourself. Just move on. It's okay. You know what pisses me off when people tell me to move the fuck on? I will move on when I have no choice but to move on. I know I'm doing this to myself. I know I'm hurting myself. That's the point. I will continue doing it until I have no choice but move the fuck on. And the good thing is, is I, I'm, I will say after this expansion, it may be that we have no choice but to move on. That's all right. So be it. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.